What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, I want to talk to you guys about the Phantom ecosystem. I want to explain to you guys why I'm still on Phantom and why I'm still uber bullish on the Phantom ecosystem. Yes, I know other people are talking about Near Protocol, other people are talking about Aurora, Metas. There are several other chains out there. Me personally, I like to go where the people are, the communities are stronger, and where they're constantly building. Now, I'm not saying the other protocols aren't doing that, but me personally, what I see coming on near and similar to what it was on Avalanche is a lot of VCs pumping. I don't like joining something like that. I mean, that's fine. If you want to be mercenary or liquidity, you can be a part of that. What I'm looking for is people, not Ponzi's. So I'm going to break down my defense for Phantom and why I'm uber bullish on Phantom. These are my ADHD notes. So I title them, why is Phantom pumping? Because everyone likes to hear pumping, right? I'm just kidding. Anyways, um, just because number go up, number go down, that doesn't mean anything about the devs. So let's go and get into the points. The first one, the liquidity mining incentive that was released on Phantom. This was two, three months ago, maybe about four months ago. This is, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's probably over a billion dollars now in liquidity incentives. And this actually goes to the devs. So this is going to create more creative projects, creative protocols, and it's not going to be like mercenary liquidity because the devs are actually incentivized. Whereas before it was the devs built a project and incentives were given to the users, which didn't help the devs in any case. So what did the devs do? Well, we want to get a percentage of it, so we just do what we do best, and we just pop something up and say, oh, we're a fork of this, and we go nuts and ham. No, with Phantom, they actually were like, okay, bro, there's only a certain amount of projects that will be selected for a certain amount of TVL, so we kind of need to make something that's a little more creative instead of all these fork degen projects and then just be like, what the snap? We just did it. No, that's the first reason why I'm bullish on Phantom. The liquidity mining incentive, no brainer. Second, Andre and Danny bringing more liquidity and bringing things to the chain. There are several different tweets from Daniel Sesta as well as Andre Cronje talking about, hey, well, the next move, the next rotation is going to be to Phantom. And they even made hints at like, hey, it's going to pump, it's gonna go nuts and ham, and it's going to be the next chain that we're planning to build on. That's not even talking about the project that they have in the works which is the VE33 protocol, which is going to be coming to the top 20 Phantom projects. Now this is going to the project holders and to the ecosystem itself. I don't know and I don't have the details on how the airdrop or how the drop will occur. That's really something some insiders may have and Andre and Daniel Sesta have details on that. Next, I want to mention the community. The community is straight grassroots. Every community member is looking out for each other. So let me give the example of Grim Finance. This was the hack that just happened. But basically with the Grim Finance exploit, several different community members and teams are working on different ways to see if they can compensate the community. A big one, for example, is Tomb Finance. Harry A, one of the main devs, AKA investors uh, behind Tomb Finance is actually looking for ways to help the community and creative fund to compensate the users who lost funds. There are other projects working to do this as well. Now this is just a minor example of the community itself just trying to help out with an exploit. Now on top of this, there was a exploit back with Tomb Finance. This happened five, six months ago. No, it was probably about four months ago. And it was just an error with the gravekeeper tax. And it was just a point where the tomb lost peg and it was just a bunch of fun stuff. But basically what happened from that is all the community members from different projects, they got together and they were there to help each other. It's not something like, oh bro, your project got rugged. Oh, you had an exploit, Pfft, stinks for you. No, it was like, hey, look, let's see what we can do to help you out. And that's what I really like about this grassroots community. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Spirit Wars. This is with Liquid Driver driving the quote unquote Spirit War. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a couple of tweets. This is the first one. This is actually with Tarot. So Tarot is actually starting to partake in this 
quote unquote spirit war. Um, and they are not the only ones. I kind of just said, let the spirit wars begin. Hashtag spirit wars, just kind of like messing around. But this is just the beginning. Grim Finance also had Gin Spirit. They were also similar to Liquid Driver with the uh, Liquid Spirit token. They're working to be like the curve convex model and that's what Liquid Driver is doing. And this is very important to understand because there is going to be a battle for the Spirit token. Because if you can boost your protocol and boost your pools, this is going to cause more and more people wanting to deposit Spirit tokens to bring rewards to their protocol because anyone can list their protocol on Spirit Swap. This is the first one I hinted at. Now this is a thread I posted up on Twitter. You guys can check it out if you guys want. Um, but this is basically breaking down is Spirit or Liquid Driver a better buy? Similar to like Curve and Convex. Like is it better to buy Curve at a point or Convex at a point? Depending on the votes you can get. And it just kind of explains the pros and cons and the differences and just breaks down some maths for you guys so you guys can see what's up in it. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can take a read into that. Now these are just the spirit wars I'm talking about. Spirit is about to go through massive upgrades and just to name a few of them, is the first is going to be lower slippage, faster speeds, and they're also involving ape mode. This was just activated I think it was a week or two ago and this is allowing you to take levered positions on different protocols or different coins that you're bullish on they even have a bonds mechanism now to help with the price action on spirit so there's constantly protocols buying up spirit locking up spirit there's people farming spirit locking up spirit to get higher rewards in fact over 60 percent of the spirit circulating supply is locked up this cannot be accessed and it's going to be that constant flywheel to where maybe to the point eventually where you have spirit tokens being admitted that are given back to the spirit protocol and then people earn spirit again and then give it back to the protocol and then you're kind of thinking wait is spirit just getting all this liquidity for free just a fun conundrum okay so that's enough for spirit and liquid driver liquid driver is going to <laughs> And those guys are sopping up all the spirit they can. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the next one is Tomb Finance. Now, Tomb Finance is going multi-chain. This is going to be leading the way, in my opinion, for the Phantom ecosystem. Because a lot of people come in for the crazy APRs. They're like, whoa, this is awesome. And then they see the rest of the Phantom ecosystem and be like, bro, I only brought a tent, but I guess it's time to build a house over here. I love this community. So they get over here. They play around with Tomb Finance. Tomb Finance is going multi-chain. So they like it over there. So they're like, hey, let's go to the native Phantom ecosystem. And then you look at the back end and why is Tomb Finance able to do what it does? Well, this is the problem with Phantom. Most of the Phantom is A, either locked up in DeFi, B, being staked to secure the network, C, on different exchanges, or, well, they're simply just some phantom that's lost in different wallets as well. Now that you have those things in mind, why do I mention that? Well, the problem is, is that phantom has a liquidity issue. If you buy a certain amount, you sell a certain amount, it causes volatile price action because there is not a real supply that is out there. A good example of this you can look at similar to like Ethereum, where 10% of the supply is locked up into ETH 2.0. This cannot be accessed. So say for example, you have 100 million ETH tokens. There's really only 90 million because that other 10 million cannot be sold. That is what Tomb Finance is looking to solve. It's creating a coin that is going to be pegged to Phantom. So one to one ratio. And with that in mind, how does it get pegged? Well, you're going to have to mint a bunch of them to help with the liquidity issue. That's why me personally doing the math on it you can look at Tomb Finance being able to print, literally just print Tomb tokens, just emit them for at least nine months to be able to have somewhat of a good liquid token on Phantom. That's just something to keep in mind. Over a nine month period, you can look at it. You're going to be getting about a billion Phantom or a billion Tomb tokens, which if they're a one to one ratio, uh, that would be 33% of the current supply of phantom and that will help with the liquidity that is going to be needed because there is another exchange coming 
that will mainly be for native phantom tokens, which is also very bullish, which is the Felix exchange. Now, the Felix exchange is something that Harry Yeh is rolling out. This is going to be different tokens that are going to be paired with Tomb and I assume some Phantom. So this will be like your Scream, Liquid Driver, Spirit, Spooky Swap, just to name a few. Now with this happening, now you're like, okay, well, that's awesome and all. How does this help the protocol? Well, this allows a quote unquote Binance fork or a Binance exchange fork because this is built on the Binance cloud. So it's going to be similar as Binance and you can buy these different tokens on the exchange. Well, in order to exchange the tokens, you're going to have to have the actual tokens itself. So now there is going to be a buyer for these quote unquote altcoins as well as Tomb, as well as some Phantom because it's going to be providing it on its exchange to trade with it. So that's just a little bit about Felix Exchange. There is going to be more news coming for it. And Harry Ye even mentioned some airdrops for people with Tomb Finance and T-Share and also if you're LPing it. So just a couple things as well. Now the next one I want to talk about is Tarot. Now Tarot basically unlocks the inner degen. This allows leverage yield farming. But with the leverage yield farming, it does not stop there. When you have leverage yield farming, you can pay higher APRs to someone with your Bitcoin, Ethereum, Phantom, stable coins, whatever, because these leverage DGENs are willing to pay a higher APR or a higher uh, interest rate in order to borrow these tokens to get the higher yields because they're using leverage. So this will allow a quote unquote user to be able to deposit tokens and get interest bearing tokens in exchange. So on Tarot, if you deposit USDC, you get in exchange B USDC, which is like your receipt for your deposited USDC. They also have specific vaults that actually spread the yields around instead of just being in one specific vault that gives you the T USDC. So let's just use the T USDC as an example. This TUSDC token on Tarot is currently earning about 15% interest. Now, I wouldn't put past any protocol like, I don't know, Abracadabra Money, Creditum, those are just a few of them that could possibly leverage these interest bearing tokens to where you can have self repaying loans. What do I mean by this? Well, I'm earning 15% on Tarot with my stablecoin. So I can bring that over to, let's say, Creditum or let's say my finance or abracadabra and i can get a loan as in on abracadabra and my finance for some of the different tokens that you borrow against they don't charge you for them abracadabra it may be like two percent but on my finance they don't charge you anything at all they only charge you 0.5 percent on repaying the loan so you literally get this free loan you're already getting interest being paid on your quote unquote stable coin. So you're basically getting paid to borrow. Now you can take these quote unquote tokens, you can use them in DeFi, play around in different protocols, or you can just be like, nah, bro, I'm just gonna buy more USDC. I'm gonna deposit it into Tarot, earn me an additional 15%, bring that over here, deposit it into this vault, borrow again, buy more USDC, repeat the process and be like, what the snap, this is a lot of fun. And then I'll be like, yeah, that's called looping. Have fun, just don't, lever up too much because there is a chance for liquidation to occur if the stable coin loses peg. So have fun, but keep them safety hats on. Just be careful. So this brings out the inner degen. And this can also be leveraged on different protocols in different ways as well. Now the next one is Beethoven Finance. This is literally the only balancer fork that I have seen that actually has somewhat of a substantial volume. To understand the importance of having a balancer, you need to understand a little bit about DeFi. If you have a protocol where all your tokens are just paired to either Ethereum or Bitcoin, well, if you try to swap this, I don't know, goofy token with this, I don't know, other goofy token, you're going to have an extremely high slippage rate. Why is that? Well, because there are no two like pairs. Now, let me explain what I mean by like pairs. If I pair USDC with ETH and then I pair, I don't know, let's say USDC and uh, Bitcoin, what's going to have to happen is I'm going to swap my USDC to ETH and then my ETH 
to a ETH Bitcoin pair to where I can then go ahead and swap my Bitcoin to USDC. So I literally had to go through three different routes. With Beethoven Finance being like Balancer, it puts all those tokens into one pool. So if I wanted to swap, I don't know, let's say USDC to uh, Bitcoin, I don't have to go through all those different routes. It's going to impur, incur slippage and trading fees in each of those routes. But with Balancer or with quote unquote Beats Finance or Beethoven Finance, it's only going to be one trade, one fee. So I'm going to swap directly from USDC to Bitcoin because they're all in the same pool and they have like trading pairs. So that is the first thing to understand Beethoven Finance. Second, they are working on a gauge model. This is like the VE curve tokenomics. Time will tell. We'll see what happens with it. But typically with the VE curve tokenomics, this is where you can eventually make it to where the protocol, it fakes it till it makes it to where it goes to the point where it's all free liquidity because you're paying the beats token. People are locking up the beats to get more rewards and repeating the process. Next one I want to talk about is Creditum. Creditum is a really low market cap coin. This is seeking to create their own native stable coin, which is the CUSDC token and or CUSD token and possibly even helping with the FUSD token. The FUSD token is the quote unquote stable coin that you can mint against your staked phantom. So this will unlock more liquidity. That's if they're able to take that on. Before when they were working on stake stake, yes, they did have the white list for the contracts. So being that they're looking to have a new stable coin, why am I bullish on them? Well, first they're bringing on the VE curve model. The VE curve model is always bullish in my opinion, as long as you have buyers and demand for it. But second, I really like the team. The team is constantly building and are straight fire sauce. Some of my favorite devs are working on it. Zam and Entropy, those guys are constantly building stuff and there's some very smart solidity devs and they're very good with tokenomics. So the reason why I'm bullish on Creditum is because they are allowing another option for people to deposit quote unquote yield bearing assets. They've already listed a couple of them, uh, but yes, I know we have Abracadabra. Yes, I know this is awesome. And we also have my finance, but there is no phantom ecosystem native protocol that is allowing you to use interest bearing assets that you can borrow against. Yes, I know Abracadabra money has a couple of vaults, but they really don't have that many. And the same thing with my finance. There are a couple of them on there, but they are constantly being sopped up. That shows there is more demand out there for this type of model. Now that's enough on creditism. The next I want to talk about is Scream Finance. I know this video is getting long and overwhelming, but now you guys understand the bullish catalyst that are happening on Phantom and why I'm so bullish on the ecosystem. The next one I want to talk about is Scream Finance. This allows you to bring out the inner DJ. You can borrow against different altcoins that you have. They're actually listing altcoins that most other protocols don't. One of them is Spell, Abracadabra Money. You can actually deposit this into the vault and borrow stable coins against it. And you can even earn a yield on it in the Scream token. And you also get these quote unquote interest bearing assets because they are earning you an interest and you can actually borrow against them. And this is a imperative interest bearing money Lego that is a game changer to the Phantom ecosystem. It almost looked like Phantom as in like the uh, Degen dream. Like it, it just has the best DeFi on there. Now the next protocol I want to talk about is my finance and Abracadabra money. So these are not mainly native to Phantom, but they are on Phantom. Both of these teams are straight fire. They are constantly building junk. Daniel Sesta, don't really need to say much about them. And the Cheetow team, you guys should listen to a couple of interviews. They were on Phantom Alerts. And they even had a talk at the Phantom Conference. I highly recommend you guys listen to that talk. And then you guys can get a feel for what they're looking to do. Next is Spooky Swap. You guys know how bullish Spooky Swap is. Just take a look at this chart and tell me what you guys think. This is the seven day average fees generated based on market cap. Look, they're surpassing Osmosis, Bancor, Synthetics, Compound, Aave, Sushi Swap, Uniswap. <laughs> I mean, it's like by leaps and bounds. If you look at this, obviously comparative to market cap. This just tells you how much people are just like, nah, brah, Phantom ain't where it's at. Let's just forget this junk. Well, 
Okay, that's fine. I'll allow allow other people to accumulate. Great for you. That's just a little bit on Spooky Swap. Now, trying their decks, you'll be like, what the snap? This is like a game changer. Fees are super slow. Liquidity is great. The swap goes through almost instantly. And well, that's not even talking about X-Boo. You can actually stake your boo, earn a yield, and stake that X-Boo to earn different tokens. They have a bunch of different assets you can choose from. So, I mean, dude, you can't be yield on yield on to more yield. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, well, Harry. Harry buying the dip, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Um, anyways, Harry A, I'm uber bullish on him and the Tomb Finance ecosystem. This is why I'm uber bullish on Harry. So, let me play this thesis out for you. Harry A is bullish on Phantom. He's got a lot of Phantom. But here's the problem with Phantom. Phantom has liquidity issues. He can't sell. He's got the golden handcuffs. He tries to sell. He's going to dump on his bags. So what he needs to do is he needs to build up liquidity for Phantom. So being that you know that, what does he have to do? Well, he has to support the ecosystem and help with Tomb Finance and bringing other people to get in. Quote unquote, exit liquidity. But he can't really dump right now. So you actually have somewhat of a time clock on him to be able to figure out when he is able to dump. Obviously, when the price goes up and more and more people get into Phantom, that's when you should start getting worried. But as you see him incubating Tomb and looking to roll out that project, um, I did a video on Tomb Finance a couple weeks ago, and I mainly mentioned it in Discord, breaking down the math on how long Tomb can possibly print. Um, but basically with the math on it, it can as of now, at least nine months or 10 months, it can get about 1 billion different tokens and still be able to print after that. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, this is what's yet to come. <laughs> we still don't have a Coinbase listing or exchanges that allow phantom withdrawals that are native. We did just get Binance US like two days ago, but I mean, who even uses Binance US? The next is Ave. We still don't even have an Ave. I mean, what the snap? Like Ave, what, what's going on? Whatever. Next is Felix Exchange. This hasn't even come out yet. This is going to be so bullish for the uh, native Phantom altcoins. Not financial advice. Just wanted to mention that because in order to list tokens on an exchange, what do you got to do? Oh yeah, you got to buy it so you can list it. More liquid staking protocol, as in Creditum, potentially being able to help with the FUSD peg. And this is very important because when you're staking, you're earning a small yield, whereas you can earn more of it in DeFi. If you can earn more of it in DeFi, more people are willing to withdraw their stake, hence, which would also lower the security of the network and move around into DeFi. You want to make staking look like it's the best option. So bringing out liquid staking will be like, oh bro, I need to stake so I can secure the network. It's just a bonus yield. And I just use my liquid stake token in DeFi. So I get the best of both worlds. So why not? That's why I'm uber bullish on liquid staking. This is even coming to the Cosmos ecosystem. And the last thing I mainly want to talk about is the upcoming network upgrade for lower gas fees and faster transactions. I know you guys see the gas fees and you're like, wait, why is the minimum like 125 to 150 guay? Well, because they have a cap on there for bots. So as soon as that's lowered, what do you think will happen? Let's give an example of Avalanche. Avalanche was about 225 guay minimum. And then what happened? As soon as they released that, the price action was like, what the snap? And it just took off. Next is faster transactions. So I know you're like, okay, well, how fast can they get? Well, the best part about Phantom is it's a DAG. So being that it's a DAG, it's only going to get faster and faster as more transactions are on the network. So these are just a few, <laughs> yeah, a few times like six bullish catalysts that I see coming for Phantom. Yes, I know there's Near Protocol. Yes, I know there's Metis. Yes, I know there's Aurora. There's so many other different protocols popping up, but you can have a bunch of different Ponzi's pop up, but how long are those Ponzi's going to last? I'm looking for communities. I'm looking for teams. I'm looking for people who are actually building and working on stuff. I'm not looking to move to the next layer one chain, just farm over there for like two weeks, three weeks, and then hope I pull out in time not to get dumped on. You guys remember what happened with Avalanche when Ave listed? Nobody, I mean, nobody thought it was going to dump at that point and Phantom was going to move. And then nobody, nobody 
thought Phantom was going to dump like four or five days later and then move back to Avalanche. It's hard to predict something like that. So I look for communities. I invest in people, not Ponzi's. Now, guys, I want to mention the risks to this. Yes, there is a chance that Phantom ecosystem does not get adoption. Yes, there is a chance that other people will be moving to other chains and other chains get more adoption than Phantom. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. And there also is a chance that you may be speculating on one of the altcoins in the Phantom ecosystem and you buy it because you think it's going to go up. What I'm mentioning is these are different protocols and dApps that are on Phantom. These are different things that you can use. I'm not telling you to buy the token. I'm just trying to explain what's going on on the Phantom ecosystem and what's being used over there. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Aave has an extremely awesome protocol. You can deposit ETH, Bitcoin, and you can borrow stables against it. But do you really need the Aave token? I mean, sure, you can buy it, earn some of the yield from it, and uh, just some of the protocol fees, whatever, that's great. But the point is, is like, I can't even think of reasons why I would really need to hold the Aave token. It's just, nah, bro, I'm good. I'd rather use your protocol. Your protocol doesn't really need a token, but it has one. So great, have fun. Now, yes, they use the token in different ways, but for me personally, as a yield maxi, I really wouldn't be looking for the Aave token. Now, the next risk is if it's a buy the rumor, sell the news event. Like if VE33 curve comes out and people are like, oh, it's out, I'm gonna dump everything. It's just one of those things. But again, I wanna phrase it like this, guys. I look at people, not Ponzi's. I see this community. This community is constantly developing. And all my experience in crypto, I have not seen any other protocol or any other project that is doing this. Yes, there are some other ones like Cosmos and like the Cosmos ecosystem. Those are really active communities. But other than that, the other ones are really just like the next layer one trade that are backed by a bunch of VCs, not financial advice. Just saying. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to jump in the Discord and hear different strategies and different things I'm doing in the market and hear some exclusive content, there's a link in the description below. It is the Patreon link. And let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom. One na na. Fire chapter 20, verses 3. It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Be good. Try not to always argue. There's too much arguing in the world, man. You guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rent a home fast, like literally at rent a home fast.